Um, so, um, yeah, I'm John, work at And Digital. Um, obviously, we are a consultancy who help organisations in digital transformation, you know, about the products and all that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to put, I'm going to spend 20 minutes um, putting a bit of a different spin on, on proceedings a little bit, because um, obviously this is very network heavy, which is amazing. Um, obviously, that is underpinning a lot of stuff that we do. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an insight in terms of how the other half use your awesome work, all those wires, those pipes, and those networks that uh, be, you know, like you lot are creating for us. Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to give some, some of my experiences. Um, and I appreciate this is kind of a, a cat, well, it's, it's, it's a segue into the world above the ground kind of thing where all these wires exist. Um, we're not really going to be talking, I'm not going to talk about anything such as containers and all that kind of stuff like Kubernetes, all the underlying networking, like that kind of stuff. What I want to do is look at how organizations can change and adapt the way they work using some basic networking strategies um, to deliver value at pace. Um, I think historically, you know, I think we're losing sight in terms of what technology can do. Um, and I also think we overlook some of the most difficult things that is networking and infrastructure. Okay. So, but before I do, um, I want, it's going to be light hearted. Um, you know, um, I appreciate there's a lot of tech heavy stuff here. So this is going to be tech light. Um, and obviously I'm hoping that you do get some value from this in terms of what my role entails and what, what I do on a daily basis. So as you can see, um, your delivery will be with you shortly. Obviously, it's going to be packaged and it's going to be deployed onto all these superb, solid, reliable infrastructures that are being built and provided to us, cloud or otherwise. Um, that is until we noticed that after all the hard work, it didn't fit. Um, and we then had to spend weeks, if not months, and X amount of pounds fixing these things and obviously introducing a lot of architectural, technolog technological debt on top of all this work. Um, as you can see, two minutes later, it's stuck, doesn't fit. Um, and then the teams are scrambling. And who puts out the fire? More than likely platform or infrastructure um, to help make it fit. Okay. Um, but first of all, um, I want to meet Bill. We know Bill. Um, Bill is works in development. Um, and Bill does, he likes to do things by the book. Um, and he likes routine, he avoids change, um, and he often overlooks that final 80%. And what I mean by that is the development overtakes pretty much everything until that point of delivering that service that requires infrastructure, requires networking of traffic, requires all the stuff around, you know, routing at a networking level, you know, addressing all this stuff the code works, Bill gets excited, but Bill is doomed and we don't want to be like Bill, do we? Because we want to make sure that what we deliver is solid, sound and delivers a quality of service that, you know, customers expect. Okay, so three rules and that's all. I've only got 20 minutes, so I want to keep it very, very quirky. Um, but rule one is, you know, challenge, challenge that status quo and focus on what's important. Any changes, regardless of the size, and I'm sure that you guys understand changes are inevitable in what we do anyway, um, but changing technology is far easier than changing behaviors. And what I'm sure a lot of people will come across is straight away, by default, a lot of organizations and companies will use technologies that scapegoat and to try and move quicker to get that value delivered, they, they will look at alternative technology solutions. But really what I see and what, you know, what I'm sure a lot of people see is behaviors and the people and the processes around these things that, that tend to slow, slow this down. So the status quo bias, and this is what I want to talk about. And I'm, I'm quite passionate on, on not focusing too much on the technology because for me, it's about 
all the stuff that we build from an infrastructure level is useless if there's nothing being served on it. And this that we serve on the infrastructure that's being built, are all these digital products, are these services, Facebook, you know, all these, all these services are pointless if we can't get them delivered in time. And I'm sure Facebook and I'm sure Ben and all the guys over there, you know, don't the, the cadence to get new features out, they have to move quick. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's other companies out there and the old theme around missing the boat is sometimes the, the release pipelines are so convoluted that final 80% takes a lot longer than the actual development and it's expensive and the boat goes and then you, you, got, you miss your opportunities and you see it a lot in digital transformations where they spend so much time doing upfront designs and looking at all, you know, perfecting what they're doing to get this silver bullet. They, they just missed the opportunity. So what I want to talk about in this first part is not necessarily following that status quo, but looking at the, the behaviours. And there's two forces that are at play here, typically around delivering value to customers and getting these things delivered. And, and that is friction and, and, and fuel. And irrespective of how you look at it, there is, you know, it's quite simple in reality. Unfortunately, though, the theory is far more difficult than it is in practice. Um, and this tends to blur the lines a lot between what we perceive as being able to deliver quickly and what the application is. The latter can be learned through actually doing these things and, and, and reading how to do it. But every situation presents a new set of challenges that we need to overcome, learn and adapt um, to be able to deliver services and digital products at, at pace. Ultimately, though, the only way we can adapt to these changing environments is to change, grow and adapt. And that's taking risks and reducing blast radiuses and all that kind of stuff, which we'll talk about uh, later on. Um, again, I'm not going to start replaying um, quotes, but Isaac Newton, for example, you know, we all know about friction and physics and, you know, thing, you know, a, a body at rest will remain at rest. Um, I'll not read the rest because it's a bit boring, but you get the idea. Um, so in terms of in terms of this, so how, how, how did Bill turn this around? So in, to give a bit of a real world example, um, it's quite often in what I do and what I do, we go into some, you know, we go into some client engagements, back end ever infrastructure, you know, deployments that require, you know, delivery at scale. Um, what we see is a lot of the time, the engineering side of it's, it's, it's amazing. Like some of the stuff that these guys are building is is out of the world, out of this world. But then it comes to the to the deployment and things come to a grinding halt. And then there's people conflicting with each other and people's agendas and focus and all that kind of stuff. So if we want to look at how we accelerate value and deliver at an accelerated pace, there's a few things we can look at. The first thing we need to do, and it's quite simple, is reduce friction. And we want to increase that fuel to deliver value quicker. So we want to, we want to basically increase, increase the commitment. Commitment's a big one. And what you find, and I'm sure when you're designing your networks and you're building up all your different infrastructure and all that kind of stuff, if you go into something half-heartedly, the chances are it's not going to see the, see the light of day. Um, so commitment is a key thing. And without commitment, our real motive um, behind the change you know, teams, development teams, infrastructure teams, platform teams, the delivery team, they become fatigued. And, and the reason for this is there's, a, there's, there's resistance to change. Replatforms are a typical example of where infrastructure clash with dev and engineering practices because you've got BAU who are trying to obviously, you know, get investment and, you know, the the revenue streams and all that. And you've got, you've got development and all these doing some innovative design and thinking using the latest and greatest tech. Um, but without that commitment, it's in parallel and it doesn't work. Um, trust and transparency is another piece of fuel that you can increase. Um, trust, as, as, as I'm sure you know, is an often overused term. And it's quite carny when people say trust is earned. Um, there is some truth in this though. Um, although I would say trust must be earned as a team and it can only be demonstrated, it can only be earned through demonstrating their ability to recover from failures um, and making those decisions effectively. 
And they can't recover from a failure if they're testing things or developing in isolation. These things need to be tested in the real world. And this is where we can start utilizing networking and the stuff that you guys build. And obviously the, 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 the different strategies you've been talking about up to now um, to help with this. Um, having trust in your team, it's the secret to delivering at pace. Um, giving your team that empowerment as well to make those decisions and autonomy to see things to the end will do wonders. Um, as well, and I think this is one, and I'm sure irrespective of what it is we do as a specialism, whether it's networking, whether it's sysops, architecture, platform, low level infrastructure, everything we do, needs, there's got to be a goal. And what we often find is when deliveries are drifting and an exa, you know i've got we've got some really real horror stories where we've come in not and but even teams that i've been involved in right like you know you've got a six week delivery it seems easy five weeks in it's the fan and then it, it, the reality sinks in and that's all because you know what it's just they're just going through the motions and there's no goals there's no milestones there's no checkpoints there's no motive behind what they're doing and essentially what happens is we, we just burn out um, and then obviously there's nothing delivered. The, the networks that get built, you know, the infrastructure, the, the solid infrastructure that we can see, you know, the, the stuff that containers are built on, right? The, you know, Kubernetes, all this stuff is essentially just abstracting out the, what you guys are building. Um, what, what we tend to see is it's this lack of emphasis on that right side of the delivery process. Now I appreciate this is kind of segueing way, way, way above from what, we're, what today's talk is about, but it's important. I honestly believe that the return on investment on what what we do at an infrastructure level is is used and utilised effectively. Far too often, I think development and these digital products just just money sinks. They just we don't you know we build a lot of technical debt into these things. You know they don't make it to where they need to get to on time. The reason for this is we focus what we call, and for those guys who are familiar with different methodologies, um, Kanban, for example, or Scrum or Lean or whatever it may be, waterfall methodologies. And I'm sure infrastructure guys on the call work very closely with developers who have got boards. And on this board, they start at the left and they get it all the way through to the right. The, what, 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 what we see is a lot of emphasis and a lot of purists view on things is it's got a flow through Flow, flow, flow through the process from, you know, from picking up that piece of work all the way through to getting it done. 99% of the time, it's considered done, but it's not done and it's not tested. It's not, you know, the, the things that are overlooked are things like, you know, functional requirements and the environmental constraints in terms of what the physical infrastructure looks like. How do, you know, in a distributed world, especially with microservices as well, how do we know that these things can talk together? You know, it's, and it's always, you know, development then start rallying around speaking to the infrastructure guys in terms of, oh, we need access to this. We need all these firewalls. What about the ingress at this point? How do we ensure that it's, you know, and then all these things start spinning around. And then all of a sudden there's another six months on top of it. Um, so one thing that we do tend to want to do is reduce the friction. And this is around reducing complexity, you know, reducing the number of columns I know this sounds really, it's really low tech. It's not very technology focused, but just recently was on a, was on a, a re-platforming engagement that was moving away from an on-prem infrastructure ever, you know, back office system all the way to a cloud native form. What we noticed, the, the development was fine, but there was no progress being made they was getting obscured by some of the technology, some of the metrics, some of all this other stuff. And what we noticed was the process was so, as it was probably as convoluted as the actual infrastructure that they was moving away from. They was making it worse. Um, so what we needed to do was, in terms of if you consider your network topologies and you've got all your different ways of, you know, passing packets across to and fro, a lot of the time, it's, you know, especially from my point of view, getting the, these, these teams to step away, understand the team topologies and look at how these teams interact. And this is essentially very important when we look at a networking side and we look at how buildings are structured and how these teams can communicate effectively. 
Um, a lot of this does come down to our, you know, what technology and tools we can use. Um, obviously, there's things around defects that cause friction that slow things down as well. Um, defect escape rate is something that obviously we want to massively get away from as well. So um, the rule number two, um, obviously that was around behavior and now we can change behaviors to flex and deliver value a lot quicker um, to get those um, services to the end user and the products out there. Um, rule two is around simple technology and not necessarily always choosing the most shiny, latest and greatest thing. Um, a lot of developers, obviously, I'm sure, as you're aware, you know, containers and Kubernetes rely heavily on, you know, all this auto scaling and all this elastic kind of scale and demand, spikes in traffic, all this stuff. What we see as well is a lot of these technologies are adopted when, when you look at the traffic and you look at the volume and the workloads, it's nowhere near where Facebook are at. It's, you know, it's, it just doesn't warrant these kind of things, but yet we're still going down these routes of choosing this thing when in reality, just a simple, you know, a three, you know, just a three node web server with a, with a low balancer will probably do the job just as well. And it will reduce the, the complexity and allow us to deliver these things quicker. However, that aside, it does come back down to the behavior as well. Okay, so um, again, I, and, and I've said this a few times in terms of, is, is it technology that's slowing us down more really? Um, or are we being distracted by our own bias towards the tech? Um, that's, you know, that's preventing us from delivering value at pace. Um, you know, Bill, from the start, he's six months into a three month project. You know, pressure is on and motivation is low. Um, what should Bill do? First and foremost, the first thing they'll probably start doing is they'll throw numbers at this. Um, and as you know, friction increases with the number of moving parts. And, and what we see a lot of is um, resources, just throw resources at these things. Um, and, and again, it's not really the technology, but it's, it's the topologies and it's the bandwidth, it's the communication between teams. It's all this other stuff outside of technology. Um, so, Coming, you know, fast forwarding a little bit, how can we how can we negate this and increase that repeatability and predictability of, of our deployments? Um, you know, localize faults and reduce the blast radius to prevent outages. I'm gonna use a, just a real world example very quickly in terms of a very simple web application that was developed most recently. Um, dead simple. You know, the 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 lead time of getting that a change on that to to production, it was once a week, well, it was quite, it was a long time, right? And it had many, many sign offs. It had all these different little environments that we needed to replicate. It was so expensive. Um, so what, what we did essentially on this um, was we, we wanted to look at ways of simplifying it because let's be honest, releases, everyone dreads that release date, um, especially I'm sure from an infrastructure point as well they're going to be on call because a developer develops some code, it goes live, it doesn't fit, you know, none of the stuff works. It's all that typical, you know, we're all competing against each other. So it doesn't have to be like that. Um, and the way we can avoid this is by looking at deployment strategies by using all these lovely, wonderful technology options we've got. For example, Azure Traffic Manager, which takes advantage of the domain name, uh, DNS, you know, we can do Canary deployments, for example, and it's blue green, and there's lots of different strategies out there now that's taking an exploit in all these, you know, all this wonderful infrastructure that's being built. Um, and for an, uh, just recently, just this week, um, we just gone live with a new digital service for a public sector. Um, the constraint straight away was we didn't really have the, you know, the funding for all these environments, didn't have the time. We didn't have the time for traditional testing. So essentially, we needed to test in live. But testing in live is quite risky. So what we wanted to do essentially will give us a fail fast and allow us to kind of reduce that blast radius, but build resiliency into that pipeline. Um, so we, as a team and as, a, as an organization for the client, develop, uh, developed and implemented um, Canary deployments using Azure, Dev, Azure Traffic Manager, um, which massively simplified it because we didn't need to worry about the low level infrastructure and the low level detail. We could concentrate more on 
multi-region deployments, but having a single ingress and not worrying about how we manage the traffic routes in between the two. Um, so essentially we went live with this route and we managed to get it through. It, you know, in, in, in next to no time really, um, we got it live, you know, the longest thing actually was the DNS updates for the CNAME entries and, and all that kind of stuff. That was, that was probably what um, took the longest, but I think there's a flip side to this. And obviously looking at the different deployment strategies that we can adopt, I do think sometimes it is stepping back and looking at the constraints that we have to work within because not everything's perfect and you know not everything's cloud native and we do still have to worry about this the every infrastructure that we need to deal with um which again often gets overlooked you know vpc peerings between on-prem you know um and and cloud hosted services all this kind of stuff it's it's difficult to do um again i think some Three things really what I'd like to take away from, from delivering value at pace and essentially how do we, you know, utilizing DevOps, you know, the testing in terms of sh shifting, testing, right, and all that kind of stuff is um, don't wait until it's too late. Um, and if there's any developers on the call who do work in that capacity, one thing I would strongly suggest and recommend is, you know, Challenge status quo. Don't follow things by the boot. Sometimes, you know, being practical and being pragmatic is required. For example, you know, Scrum, there's lots and lots and lots of different ceremonies, right? A lot of them ceremonies are pointless. Focus on reaching that goal. Do the hard work up front. Speak to the infrastructure guys. Go to platform, integrate early. Integration and full integration of your systems is the single most thing that is the root cause to most delays because they stub out services too often and then don't retire them. So by integrating early, we can get to, you know, we get to test routing, we get to test all the infrastructure that it's hosted on. Um, the second takeaway is don't choose technology on the basis that it's uh, cool, shiny, or the next best thing. Um, you know, make sure it's unique to you. Your organization's challenges are unique you know, take um, network rail, you know, they're, they're going to have to have some kind of bespoke technology that not everyone can use, right? Because their challenges are, are, are unique to them. Um, and finally, choose deployment strategies wisely um, and focus on repeatability and predictability. And this is quite easy these days with, with technology, actually. So technology does simplify these things, using things like infrastructure as code and all that kind of stuff. These, you know, little tactics like this can help, help along the way. Um, a closing note is it's not a matter, matter of if, but when, and I know Ben from Facebook mentioned this, things fail. And this, and I think people are ignorant to the fact that failures happen and they don't plan and anticipate failure. So they focus on the functionality of what they're building rather than the non-functional requirements, such as like mean times, recovery points, you know, what about data that might get lost in the terms of outage? You know, it's far better to have disruption to service than an outage, but it's not easy to achieve. And I think this is often overlooked um, in a delivery sense. And it's that final 80% that, that prevents that. So shift right, focus on the hard things, bring that left and do it, do the hard work now. And then obviously you can focus on the dev later. Developing is easy. Developing is the easiest part. I think people and process followed by infrastructure um, comes first. And I think if we can get a paradigm shift in development teams to start focusing on infrastructure a lot more, then I don't see why delivering at pace should be an issue.